Hi, Britt Davenport here. Welcome to another episode of On the Vice. Today we are going to be tying up a mouse pattern. It's called a Mr. Hanky. It's a Jeff Hickman pattern. It was created uh, for bows up in Alaska. Uh, it could also be used for brown trout and pretty much any predatory fish that might go after a mouse. I'm hoping this year to give it a try on some of our local lakes and reservoirs for some of the bass that we have. With that, let's get started. Today we will be tying the pattern on a fish skull senyo's articulated shank. We're going to be using a 40 millimeter. These are copper, but you could use whatever color you'd like. You won't really see too much of it. For the stinger hook, we are going to be using a size six Daiichi. And it's a 2557. For the wire, we are using Senyo's Thin Intruder Trailer Wire. You can also use heavier mono. That's entirely up to you. So let's get started. I'm tying this today on my Norvice Legacy. I'm using the inline shank jaws. So we're gonna start by putting our shank in the jaws. And then for thread, I have spooled up some Semperfly Classic Waxed A-Dot in beige. Uh, it would be preferable to use 6-Aught since we're tying with foam, but I don't have any 6-Aught, so we're gonna use A-Dot and just make sure to really flatten the thread out so that it doesn't cut through the foam as much. So we're gonna start by dressing our hook shank. And just get a nice layer of thread down. Now we're going to be using this intruder wire to tie in a stinger hook. What I'm going to do is tie it in one side on the top and then I'm going to measure. So you want to be able to take this stinger hook on and off that way, if you need to replace it, you're able to without uh, completely, you know, scratching the fly and throwing it in the trash bin. So just make sure when you fold this over that it's wide enough, long enough for you to be able to put that in, uh, stinger on and off. I'm not going to actually be putting it on today. That's the nice thing about it is you can uh, just measure that out and then tie the rest of the fly without having the hook in there so you're less likely to uh, impale it into your skin. So I'm just going to bring that up. Grab that with our thread. I like to have these on the top of the hook shank as much as I can. And then we're just gonna bring those forward and then go ahead and double each of them over and capture that with your thread as well. And so that'll really lock those in since that is going to be the what our hook is attached to. Once you have those on, go ahead and take some wire nippers and just cut those out. The scrap. Be sure not to cut anything you're not supposed to. So, we'll get the intruder wire on. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to put drop the super glue on there. These flies are being used for big bows, big browns, your predatory fish. So, um, the more durable we can make them, the better. Okay, so the body of the fly is going to be Nature Spirit Zonker Strips Cross Cut 1 8 inch. And I'm just using a light natural brown today. And that will also be the tail material. For the tail, I've just cut away the hair from one of the strips. We're just going to tie that in on the top of the hook shank. It doesn't matter how long it is right now, you can certainly trim it to length once we're done. Go ahead and grab that with our clip. Put that 
bottom down good and tight. And now for the body, I'm using a full strip. When you tie this in, you want to make sure that when you wrap it, the hair goes to the rear of the fly. It's crosscut, so a crosscut means that if you can see, the hair is coming down off of the strip, where if it was just a regular zonker, the hair would be going in line with the strip. So it's just a matter of how they cut it. And depending on the fly you're tying, you may want one or the other. For this, since we want the hair to go back, the cross cut works best. So I'm gonna tie that in. And then advance your thread up to about the midpoint. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a half hitch in there just to save our work and bring our thread over to our bobbin post. Now again, I'm just gonna put down just a little bit of super glue. You don't have to, of course. But... And then as you're wrapping this, just be sure that hair continues to go to the rear of that shank. With the cross cut, it shouldn't be too hard for that. It should want to go that way, but you will have a few pieces that you may want to come forward. So bring it right up to where your thread stopped. Now we're gonna tie this off, but that being said, we're not going to cut the material off right here. So we're just going to tie that off and then we'll switch out to a bigger clip right now. I'm going to clip that back. And then I just messed my bobbin spool up, so just one second while I fix that. never fails when you're tying for a video it will go wrong <laughs> there will always be something and that's okay it's good to know that that happens to all of us no matter how long you've been tying sometimes things just don't cooperate So we're back on track. Okay. So at this point, we are going to tie in our foam body. So for this, I'm using Nature Spirit 3mm Bug Foam in Tan. I've already cut out a shape for it. Uh, the first few I tied, I just had to play around with it a little bit and uh, got it to a shape that worked for me. And then I made a little uh, cutout of it out of some synthetic paper that I can use to trace onto the foam for future flies. Um, so then I just cut a bunch of them up so I have them ready. So for this, I'm going to put just a drop of super glue here again where we're tying that foam in. I know this is where six dot thread would be a lot better, but I don't have any six dot Semperfly in class in beige, so I'm just going to spin my thread counterclockwise to flatten it out a little bit, just so it doesn't cut into the foam so much. Now I'm going to take just some loose wraps and then, once I have some loose wraps in there, I'm going to pull tight. And by doing that, it also helps keep from cutting the foam so much. Okay. Roll that in there. 
you still got that bare shank in front of it. At this point, we're gonna tie in some legs. I'm just using some Five Tires Dungeon Bug Legs in brown. I like to leave these quite a bit long at this point. It'll allow you to clip them back so they stay out of your way as you're working on the rest of the fly. You bring that down and around. And take a couple of securing wraps over top. Then I'm going to take the other leg. I'm going to do that same thing. I'll take it around and bring it up. I'm just going to take a few wraps over top of that. Trying not to capture any of the legs you've already tied in. Once you get those down, now you can pull those legs together. And we're going to unclip this, let that hair that was clipped back previously kind of hang down, and just clip that whole mess back so that it's out of our way. So advance your thread forward of that foam and bring it to just behind the eye. Make sure you leave room where you have to tie the foam off still. And put a little head on it. Go ahead and throw a half hitch in. Put your thread over on your bobbin post. If you want, put a little bit of super glue down. And then take that hair, the fur, and continue wrapping it up the hook shank. The first few I like to do by hand just to make sure that the hair stays going in the right direction. After that, you can use the rotary function on your vise to do that. And we're gonna go ahead and tie that hair off there at the front of the shank. And then you can just clip that excess Make sure you have that bound down nice and tight. And then take and use your fingers to kind of part that hair around so it's not on the top. Take the clip off, pull that forward. I like to still keep it clipped, that way the rubber legs stay out of our way. I'm going to spin my thread counterclockwise to flatten it out again. And then we're going to take some more loose wraps and then a couple tight ones, bind that foam down, creating the next segment of the mouse's body. Now for whiskers, I'm just using pearl crystal flash. I've also seen it done with copper, and that looked pretty nice. So go ahead and take a, a pretty good clump of them. So you've got a pretty good, good chunk there. I'm going to tie them down on the top and just do some crisscross um, kind of figure eight type wraps over top of them to hold them in place. And then kind of work them down to the sides a little bit. Once you have them in, go ahead and advance your thread to in front of the foam. You can go ahead and pull those up and trim them off. And then again, just pull them down to the sides to make them look like whiskers. So now we're at the front of the fly. We're going to go ahead and we've made a little bit of a... wall there of thread and what that does is it just helps kind of prop the which this will be the ears so it just kind of helps prop them up so you can uh, finish it however you'd like you can whip finish you can uh, put a few half hitches in you know whatever works for you just gonna put a few half hitches in excuse me whip finishes I'm gonna do it by hand it keeps wanting to slide off because I crowded it just a little bit too close. So 
I'm just gonna do a few by hand. There we go. Get that in there. Go ahead and trim your head. And now for the ears, we're just going to take this and put it straight down. You can trim these to whatever length you'd like. Um, if they're too long, they will make it more difficult to cast. And then just trim the corners off if you're so inclined. Kind of round them off a little bit. And then the final step is to just trim those legs. So you can go ahead and pull them up. Uh, when you pull on them, don't stretch them too much because otherwise they will end up shorter than you or are wanting them. Go ahead and trim those. And just make sure they're down to the sides. And there you have it, a Mr. Hanky. Again, it can be used for big bows in Alaska. Uh, any predatory fish that might go after a mouse, so browns, smallmouth, largemouth, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, if you find this video valuable and value the content, please be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And be sure to drop a comment down below. Uh, we like to hear feedback and let us know if there's any other videos you would like us to see. Thank you.